you've been the beneficiary of a lot of great men in your life. You know? Yeah. Uh, we just um, celebrated Father's Day. You just bought your business from your father. We just got done talking about your father. Let's just talk about, and you just celebrated 50 years at Woodbine, so let's maybe do an ode to your father. How did the business begin? How has he influenced you through that? What's it like buying a business from a dad? Let's just talk about yeah. dads. Well, I'll answer the one that I think is most pertinent right now, and then I'll flip the question mm. to you. But the 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 thing that I've had to unpack lately is what what's the what are the ways that he has impacted me? And I think um, there's a book I'm reading by a guy named John Tyson called The Intentional Father, which is um, required reading for anyone with a with a 10, 11, 12 year old okay. entering into that kind of teen years, girl or boy, but I think that girl or boy, I would say, I think it's, it's relevant. But, uh, one of the questions that I've had to, to think about as I, I have a 12 year old is I think about how to kind of usher him into this season of life where it's like, now you're going from a boy into a man. And, and I don't, by the way, just to add a disclaimer, not necessarily like the the typical masculinity thing um, or toxic max, masculinity, even just just saying, hey, how do you be a how do you be a man today? Um, that's kind of what I'm wa- walking through with him. But to do that, you got to do a lot of reflection. You got to say, well, what did my dad do well? What did my dad not do well? And so I've thought about that, and I just kind of said, okay, what are the what are the two or the three things the most important lessons that I've learned from my dad? And I've kind of I've kind of put that in pretty simply kind of three words, which would make a lot of sense if you know my dad. Number one would be humility. Number two would be generosity. And number three would be hustle. And if you think about those three things, none of them require words, which is what my dad was not great at. <laughs> he was present. Um, he was there for every single game, never missed a game. Um, he was there for all the big things. but. But if what you were looking for is, I love you, I'm proud of you, those types of things, th- that was not readily on his tongue. I don't hold that against him. I think everybody has to go through some moment in time where they forgive their mom or dad <laughs> for being kids, raising kids. Yeah. And that's kind of what I think, you know, for, for my dad, it was just wasn't necessarily something he grew up knowing. Um, and so when I think about those three things, humility, generosity, and hustle, those each of those have kind of key stories to them and moments that have kind of shaped how how I live. But but those were the most important lessons that I think have influenced everything that we do at, at Woodbine. Because naturally, as the founder of Woodbine, you're, that company takes on the personality of the founder. And that that's what we've tried to do, um, I think, in those three areas. So I'm going to flip it on you. <laughs> so what are the what are the two or three? Um, and I'm not, it sounds like our dads were, were very similar. I wrote, a, a I was telling you, I wrote something on medium a few years ago, uh, on father's day and, um, humility, generosity, hustle. Uh, you mentioned those, I think the things that had come to mind, um, that day. So, uh, my dad passed away actually 11 years ago today, yeah, sorry. um, at his funeral, there's, uh, that's a long day. Uh, it's very blurry. Um, I may or may not have taken something to calm the emotions. Mike Leach? Yeah. Version. Um, uh, and the one thing that stood out to me that day, which characterized my dad, I think perfectly was I was, you, you stand at the end of the, at the end of the ceremony, everybody's walking by giving you their well wishes and, a. An old gentleman um, who uh, came up to me, never seen him. He, I said, he said, you know, my condolences. And I said, thanks. And uh, he said, can I tell you a quick story? I said, yeah, I would love to. And he just said, uh, I'm the I'm the janitor at the hospital that your dad's a doctor at. And I said, great to meet you. And he just said, uh, nobody has ever paid attention to me the way your mm-hmm. dad did. And, God, um, yeah, I think the the lesson learned there, especially in today's world, which is a very me centered world, 
he we said we're gonna do this. yeah 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 you start talking about dads it's gonna happen <laughs> it just uh he he just made sure that everybody felt comfortable yeah yeah and i mean everybody the 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 janitor is is equal to the ceo mm -hmm. we're all god's children mm -hmm. humans tend to categorize mm -hmm. but so all right i'm gonna get through this so that was one um and then humility i mean he just i think that speaks off the backs of that you know he was a lawyer partner at a law firm uh decided at 37 he wanted to go to medical school become a doctor and serve you wouldn't do that if the, if you wanted to take the popular road that's right you wouldn't do that if you wanted to make more money you wouldn't do that if you wanted to hang out uh in the the top crowds you would just stay a lawyer and just do that for the rest of your life <laughs> you're not you're not moving to lubbock texas you are not moving your family to lubbock texas and making no money for eight years if you want to do the popular thing mm -hmm. it's it is actually the probably the worst decision you could do to be popular mm -hmm. and he would tell you he never thought once about it he wanted to serve he wanted to he was very keen that you only live one life um and you might as well make the best of it mm -hmm. and so those are probably two things i could say that we might all be able to relate to i actually put a tweet out like two years ago and i was had just got done talking to my uh, talking about my dad at breakfast and so i just went on there and wrote um you know my dad was like a partner at a law firm and and he one day he decided to quit and become a doctor and he was following his dreams it was something to that degree it ended up getting liked over 280,000 times. It went around the world like multiple times. We were getting this, but it struck this chord, I think, in society, which is like we do only live once. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people, whether it's your career or just something that you're doing kind of in this vein of I have multiple lives. So if this one doesn't work, I'll just do it again. And I think about that a lot. Um, it, it, what you just said, never miss a game. You're not going to get your kid's game back mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Don't miss, you know, a kid's dance. Like there's just so many things. Yeah. Like once you miss it, it's over. Yeah. So anyway, those are probably two of the things. I think um on the on the the other side, um I've, it's so funny you asked that. I've never really gone through the exercise of like what are some of the things my dad did. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that he would say he regretted in the story I just told, although it was for the, a noble cause, from when I was seven to 15, when you're going through medical school and residency, like mm -hmm. one, you're not calling your own there. schedule. Mm -hmm. You're on call three or four nights a week. Being a med student or a resident, if you're listening to this, like God bless you, oh, it is a worst. brutal life. I watched my brother go through it. It is the worst. So he was not very present for a certain, mm -hmm. He missed things that I wish he had been at. Now, I don't know if I can hold him against that. I don't think he wanted to, um, but that's something that I remember vividly. And it, there was a period when I was a kid, I talked about it in a letter I wrote where he wasn't interested in being my best friend. He was interested in being a father. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there were times where I really didn't like him because he, again, he wasn't interested in being popular. He was interested in the right thing. And when you're a 15 year old idiot that wants to, you know, sneak beer out of your kid's house and everything, watch mm -hmm. rated R movies and hook up with girls, and you have a dad that's not supporting any of that, there can be years of your life where you're like, why do I want to hang out with this guy? Yeah. And then you kind of come out the other side and you're like, as, as every day goes by now, I literally get on my knees. I thank God. I'm like, thank you, God, because I now am connecting all those dots and going, I hope I can do this for my kids because it is easy to just want to be cool, dad. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's pretty sweet. I mean, first of all, your dad sounds like an incredible guy, but that the, the virtue of humility, I think, is the one that's, I mean, I, I feel like lost in today's world of self-promotion of hype of putting forward this image of of you know you know because it, because of social media and all the like it's like this is all the things we're doing well and and um yeah and this is this is how good i am this is how those types of things and i think 
what I've always loved about my grandfather, what I love about my dad, what I feel like I see this in my in my brother too, who I work with, is that um, never they never think they're a big deal. They never think they're <laughs> that important. They never feel like they deserve to be somewhere. They always I always see a humility in them that I that that I've always admired. I've always said, you know, that's a that's a special thing to be able to for other people to see. I think for other people to go, oh, it, it's okay not to not to put forward the image that hey, you're perfect or you've got all these things figured out, especially in kind of the 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 I feel like the business, the successful business culture, we've got to project this thing that we you know, we're undefeated. We're <laughs> always and forever. Um, it's not always like that. There, there are fail- failures and challenges and things like that that uh, that you've got to weather and you got to be able to say, okay, well, well, you know, what's the opportunity to learn from that? Yeah, I know we're both, um, you know, believers in Jesus, and I think that's basically what you just said is the thing that is of many things most attractive. Born in a manger, he was everything that was not what you would think would be a king in that time, yet change the whole world yeah in fact, i mean on that note i talk to i try to if there's a theme that i try to talk to my kids about as much as possible is saying look like you you've got to be comfortable you got to be comfortable not fitting in you got to be comfortable knowing that you're going to be on the outside looking in a lot of situations particularly if you believe with conviction the things that we believe where the world is taking and trying to convince you of any number of different items that are contrary to what we what we know and believe to be true in Scripture, it, the 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 more that I can convince them that hey, that's actually the place you want to be, a place you want to be where you're going. Hey, I don't feel like I fit in here, and you don't then have you don't have to be sad about that. You can you can actually look at that and go, hey, I'll stand right here. Yep, I'll stand right here, even if it's. Even if I'm a little bit lonely, even if I'm a little bit unsure, I'm a little bit unse- insecure about it, I'm going to stand right here because I know this is right. I know this is true, and so that that's the thing where you know as a dad, that's a, that's a hard one to you know to really communicate. Um, most of that's through where I can say to them, "Here's how I've done it wrong. <laughs> Here, here's where I haven't done that." Yep. Um, and you know, you're, of course, you're trying to course correct, if, and I hope they don't go into those same things, but. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. That's where that is kind of a central virtue that you look at and you go, man, talk about a guy that stood alone yep. and wasn't afraid to be a truth teller. Um, that, that's that's the kind of man I want to be. My, my kids will benefit greatly because I will have many stories for them on what not to do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And uh, yeah, for <laughs> that's for sure. I, I think the other thing on dads, and I don't know if your dad was this way, when my dad died, I was 25. And look, we didn't have, you know, there wasn't a ton of secrets in the family or assets that I needed to know about. It just, we, it was pretty simple. But regardless, he was super transparent with me and one of the strengths, even since I was a kid. Now, it, it was all age appropriate, like when I needed to know stuff. But when he passed, I didn't have to like learn about all this stuff. I was pretty under, I pretty much understood where all the major things and major priorities in his life were, mm-hmm. um, whether it was assets, whether it was my mom, whether it was the breakfast that he had every Friday morning with our pastor and where they stood in that conversation of four years. I just, I kind of knew where all the important things were. Um, you know, you go through your dad's laptop and phone to make sure there's nothing going on, um, Mm-hmm. in business or just stuff that could come up that could, I mean, I think people think today when they pass, it used to be you pass and maybe people could go through your diary. Now you leave a digital footprint. Mm-hmm. One of the things I'm like most proud to say, which might not seem like a big deal, I had to go through everything. And I remember going through it thinking this could change how I think about yeah. my dad. I did not find one thing that I could ever hang my hat on. Is like, <laughs> this was a different guy than I knew as a son. That's a man of integrity. That's cool. And so I think about that a lot, like just the simple rule of if I died tomorrow and, and my wife and kids had to go through my phone, would they still look at me the same way that they think they see me? That's so good. We talk, I mean, there's a one time I wrote basically 35 things, character traits that I would say, if I could, if I could pass anything on, yep. I would give a 
a almost a biblical definition to to these 35 words. And originally I was writing that thinking about my son and then I was thinking okay, what are the 35 words I would translate to my daughter as well? And I was kind of came to this realization well, the same, like 100% <laughs> the same. <laughs> So I started kind of going through these things, but you know, if you if you think about what uh, I mean, you can take any word integrity. Integrity, I always tell my kids, it's like it's doing the right thing even when no one is looking. You know, and so there's 35 of those types of definitions that then I'll try to periodically take them through to go, okay, here's what humility is, here's what character is, here's what humor is, like here's what care is, here's what compassion is. These are the types of things that I I want them to be able to hear, and hopefully that at the same time I'm kind of preaching to myself going. <laughs> I'm not living by those <laughs> things, but but that footprint, as you mentioned, doing the right thing when no one's looking, to 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 then unpack what your dad had and be able to look at that and go, man, I talk about doing the right thing when no one's looking. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, the the digital there's a digital footprint out there. Um, so anyway, it it was really interesting. Um, and I think just tying that up. And I don't know if your dad was this way with you. Obviously, you kind of grew up knowing him in Woodbine and knowing him. But um, did he kind of include you in on things even at a younger age or were you kept at bay for a while? You know, the way it, it, it was always by proximity, right? It was always by being in the room in certain places. I mean, and some of that stuff I don't feel like I knew. In fact, my dad was uh, I felt like he was pretty careful to try and protect us from thinking that we owned anything. Yep. I remember going to um to Hyatt Regency Dallas and which was this, you know, which is an icon in Dallas. And he and the Hunt family developed that uh, together and um really put Woodbine on the map in many ways. And I remember one time asking him, I, I can vividly remember the conversation where I'd be like, So so tell me like how we own that, right? He's like, No, we don't own that. And I remember like, like, we don't own any of it. He's like, <laughs> no, we don't own any of it. I was like, well, what about like, even like a small, like part of carpet square? He was like, no, we don't own any of it. And now, meanwhile, we're pulling up to valet. He's tossing the keys to the, to his buddy and, you know, we're parking in the front. And so I'm like, I'm going, what? <laughs> when I put these two together. Um, and I think part of that was, of course, he he was honest in that statement because if you think about how it was structured, we didn't know anything. Right? The, 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 if you get down to legal entity, it's like <laughs> we don't know any of it. He wasn't telling a lie. He wasn't telling a lie. Um, but but that was almost to protect me, which is the same reason why you know instead of getting a new car, I got a '86 Suburban <laughs> when I when I started driving that had a chalkboard paint job. But th those are the types of things that that I appreciated about him, and and shielding me from some of that entitlement. Yep that he was afraid I might, I might assume. And so the, the, the real work became when I was in grad school and, uh, the, we were kind of thinking about how I might join the business. My brother had joined the business about a year before. Then it really became, okay, wh what is, what are the parts and pieces of this organization? And what was unique about that is coming out of grad school, you think you're the smartest kid in the world. Anyway, I get in there and I do have an organizational mindset Anyway, I enjoy that stuff to be able to come in and go, gosh, we need to do this differently. We need to do that differently. We got to change this. And it wasn't like coming and dropping bombs, but it was a very methodical, you know, kind of dismembering and, and reassembling that my dad, he had a great comment. He was just like, as I would approach these, I think sometimes probably gingerly and sometimes <laughs> probably not so well. And his comment to me was interesting. He was like, well, just because it's the way we've always done it doesn't mean it's the way we have to do it going forward. To have that freedom, to have that license, to be able to then come in and make some of those changes and not do it in a way that was just totally bombastic was, was, a, was I think, a wonderful license to be able to kind of start to shepherd that business in the way that we wanted it to go. And so th that was probably a more gradual entry, having the history, understanding the people, knowing as much about the culture of the organization that was really important for me to be able to then come into the business and, and, and kind of start to shift it the way we wanted it to go.